Hey what's going on folks my name's Grey and today on Consultronics we celebrate the 8-bit output of one of gaming's elite studios in my top 10 Capcom NES games. If you've yet to play any of Capcom's classic 1940 series of shoot 'em ups then hang your head in shame. This is 1943, a conversion of the second arcade machine and one of the better shooters available for the NES. A brilliant game. The movie may have flopped in the United States but was actually very popular here in the UK I seem to recall. Now Capcom were never a company known for their RPGs and besides Breath of Fire and the recent Project X Zone I can't really think of any others off the top of my head. But this 8-bit offering on NES is a real hidden gem with plenty to offer any would-be adventurer. A port of an obscure mid-1980s coin-op, Section Z with its weird at first left and right shooting controls may not turn many heads, but with a little practice the game opens up into a vast exploration driven shoot 'em up. Well worth a bash. Like most people, my first introduction to Strider was on the Mega Drive, and for a long time I didn't even know the NES had a version of Capcom's 1989 arcade hit, and while it differs significantly from the source material, it's still a top quality platform title. The original Hookshot game. I never played this back in the day, but I knew it well through word of mouth just as playable today as it was all those years ago and the trademark NES game difficulty is still present. But we wouldn't have it any other way. Before we get to the top 5 I thought a quick look at some of the games that held my interest in making this video was in order in my honourable mention section. With no hope of either title appearing on the NES Capcom would release Street Fighter 2010 The Final Fight. Having grown bored of street fighting in the future, Ken Masters becomes a scientist. No really, but is lured back into street fighting, this time on a galaxy wide scale. If you're stubborn enough to get good at this game then you'll be rewarded, but not one for everybody. Before Dark Souls, Ghouls and Ghosts was the hardcore title of choice for a generation of gamers looking for a challenge. The graphics may be simple but this is a good conversion of the coin up original. All but forgotten now but Commando was a hugely influential title that would help usher in the new wave of run and gun games we've all come to love and while I'm more familiar with the Commodore 64 port the NES version still holds up. Sickeningly cute it may be, but this video game adaption of the flop animated movie that Hayao Miyazaki walked out on during production is pretty good platform fun. With a title like Codename Viper you'd be forgiven for thinking Capcom were going for a solid snake clone. Instead it's Rolling Thunder they decided to take their inspiration from as you take the law to the drug barons of South America. Top stuff. For a time Capcom had the monopoly on Disney games on the NES which was a very good thing indeed. In lesser hands the license for Chippendale Rescue Rangers could have been abysmal but before perfecting the fighting game genre they had 8-bit platformers down to a T. Loved the show back then, still love this game, a masterpiece. They said it couldn't be done and they were probably right but Capcom decided to give it a go anyhow and bring their arcade smash Final Fight to the NES and they did so in super deformed triumph. A very late release for the console meant that many people missed it first time around because they had moved on to Super Nintendos but if you get a chance try it yourself. It is without a doubt the best beat em up 
on the NES. For a system famed for its 2D platformers, the fact that DuckTales is right up there with the best of them proves Capcom at this time had a pool of talent to call upon that was second to none. This simple to pick up and play platformer based on the hit Saturday morning cartoon featuring Scrooge McDuck is rightly held up as an example of the genre at its best. And now I can't get the blasted theme song out of my head. It simply had to be, didn't it? Arguably the next best platformer behind Mario Brothers, Mega Man. This is the second instalment of the long-running franchise that I have only been playing for the last few years, and despite the fact that I don't seem to be improving at all, like a battered housewife, I just keep coming back for more, from what is not only Capcom's best effort on the system, but also one of the absolute must-haves for any Nintendo owner. So there we have it ladies and gentlemen, this has been my top 10 picks from a company synonymous with the 8-bit Nintendo and with good reason. So my name's Grey, you've been watching Console Tronics, more videos up soon, so thank you very much for watching and goodbye. <laughs>